Hello everyone, I'm Casper from Skahoy, where we give you the tools to take full control of your live productions, molding them into whatever you envision. As many of you know, we are the industry's go-to for universal controllers, whether it's for cameras, switches, routers, audio, signal processors, mixers, and beyond. And today, I have the pleasure to deep dive into the world of potential possibilities of Reactor 2.0, I will show you how you'll be able to customize your panel the way you want. In this video, I will explore the capabilities of the PTC Fly here, so you can consider this a sneak peek, showcasing a glimpse of what our controllers can do for you. With the latest update to our software platform, Reactor 2.0, personalizing your panel to meet your specific needs has never been easier. Reactor is the software that manages your Skahoy panels. So actually inside the PDC Fly, as small as it may be, there is a powerful computer that runs the software Reactor that we'll be working with in this video. So it means that the PDC Fly talks directly to the Canon cameras, it talks directly to the ATEM switcher in this video. Just to make that absolutely clear, no extra computer power is necessary in between. We're just using this Mac to access the web browser that runs or gives you access to the software. So usually you see this in Reactor, this UI with a selection of a configuration, some devices, and you can see I've already added the two Canon devices, and now I'll add the ATEM switcher as well. So I'll just press add device, I'll go over to discover devices, and on the network I'll find devices like the ATEM 2ME Constellation HD right here. So I'll just select it because it was automatically found and I have it instantly connected to my uh, PTC Fly. Usually in a standard scenario, you would ba basically go in here and select cameras like uh, just here and then they pop up on the controller as you can see right now and I can control the, the, um, the camera. But today in this video, we'll explore how we can build things from scratch. So what we do is enter in here, find the create custom configuration link and then I will type in a title for it, for this um, Canon PTC, create, and now we are completely on our own. Isn't that amazing? This is the configuration tab you see right now, and it's really simple to set this control up. The first thing I want to do is to make it a basic ATEM switcher, right? So what I'll do is to just uh, drag across these buttons, and then over here you see the devices I have access to. So here is the ATEM switcher. I will open program preview, select program preview, select, and now I can just pick the ME row that I want to work with, ME number one, and then I'll just pick input number one on this switcher like this. And then I go into batch edit, and here I place the cursor in the first field, press four times on the plus one, and it will automatically populate the other buttons with numbers one to five. And now I have basically, yep, preview select on these buttons. Quickly, I'll just press A6, I will search for, I can search also, so just search for cut. We have a cut uh, behavior right there. Again, I need to select the ME row of the ATEM switcher, so we have it there, and now I also have a cut button. How many seconds was that? That's really, really cool, wasn't it? Now, the joystick should, of course, control one of the cameras. So what I will do is to uh, click, we, we have basically the um, left-right dimension, which is this one, we have the up-down dimension, and then we have the rotation, and then finally we have the button on top. All right, so I want to click this one, and then I take the Canon CIN 500 camera at first, go into PDC, and I associate this with pan. Okay, let me see. I pan the camera, the camera is panning. What about tilt? No, 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 tilt doesn't work, right? Because I've not assigned anything to that axis. So I'll do that right now, real quick here. Tilt, all right, I have tilt now. I'll do this for, for this one. I will, uh, I will associate that with zoom, all right? So let's try, can I tilt? Yes, I can tilt, I can pan, I can do combinations of the two, that's all fine. Can I zoom? Yes, I can zoom, <laughs> perfect, all right. And then on the top, I want to make this button a, well, what, I'll, I'll make it into a cut button, actually. All right, uh, and I need ME row, just set that real quick here. Cut, 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 cut. Okay, so I now have redundancy on my cut button. For the encoder knobs up here, I can also add parameters really easily. So I'll go into the CIN 500, find a parameter like gain that I can now apply to this button. I can, or knob, I can 
find uh, Indie Filter for the next one. Let's take that one and then what else? We want to do pedestal, for instance. So now I have three nice parameters on these knobs up here. For the fir uh, fourth one, I want to reserve it for something special. You'll see in a moment. But I, you can see that I'm able to uh, change the ND filter on the device with this one. I can also change, uh, let me see. Maybe we just want to clear this out once again. It takes a little bit of time because it's a mechanical feature in the camera. I can adjust the gain. I can also adjust pedestal. Preset recall. I want preset recall. So um, I want to put it on the buttons down here in the in the bottom, and I can of course zoom around in the interface. That's really nice. So I'll just drag across these, and then I basically want to add it on on this layer. So actually, I need to select the shift layer first. And if you go to the shift state um, here, then uh, you still see that underneath we are able to do selection of preview on the ATEM switcher, but and that's because the, the shift level is currently transparent until I drag across them and I decide to assign something else. I want to assign preset, preset store and recall. That's a combined behavior in our universe. You press and hold to store something and you just press quickly to um, recall it again. I only need to select my preset ID really easily here and then I'll use the batch editor once again just place my cursor here and then automatically increment from one to six. Now I have preset recall. Let's just try it. There's one preset. There's another preset for the camera and so forth. Okay. So my main problem right now is navigation because right now I need to use the UI to get in and out of this state. You can see the controller follows along with the on-screen display of the controller. So that's perfectly synced, but I need something as my shift key. This is the moment I am contemplating changing what I put on the top button on the joystick. All right, so here it's really important that you keep in mind that now we have this shift level. I don't want my shift function, my shift behavior to be on this button on the shift layer itself. It has to be on the normal uh, state. Otherwise, I would only have that function when I am in the shifted state. All right, so I will basically go back and instead of having cut, I will now find the navigation functions in the bottom of the page. There's shift hold down and I'll apply that to the top button of the joystick. It is already there. So notice what happens. I just press the joystick and immediately I get access to my preview, uh, preset recall buttons for the camera. So my intention was now to build an extra layer that gives you access to the second camera. Wouldn't that be natural? I mean, we have PTC cameras for a reason, and that is to, to manage multiple of them at the same time. So what I will do here is to create a second page. And the default is you create a transparent page. Once again, it's like the shift level. When you create this page, you will still see the background underneath, unless you override that page with something else. So we'll call this uh, CRN300, because that's my second PTC camera. And if I go to this page, Okay, I'm there. Actually, everything still works underneath. If I use the joystick, I'm actually adjusting this one until I assign the same actions for the CRN300. So this is pan. Let's just do that real quick. So let me click this guy. I click here and I want to assign tilt. So in the CRN300, tilt is selected. Okay, we're good. We click on the next one, which is the ring to rotate to zoom. And I have that one now, so I'll assign zoom to this guy. And then finally the button in the middle. Well, do I want to change that? Actually, no, because if I do not assign anything on a transparent layer, it means that it falls through to the background. And on the background, I have assigned the shift function to this. So it is still shifting my, my layers. But now for the uh, left, right, up, down, and the rotation of the joystick, I have now assigned it to the CRN300. So pan tilt and also zoom. Let's try to go back to the background page. We have pan, we have also tilt, and we have zoom on this camera. Okay, so once again, I need navigation, right? So I'll basically have to uh, go to the encoder knob here that should navigate between my two cameras. That's my intention. So once again, if I want that, navigation to be on the background in the normal state, I should make sure to select background and normal here, click on this encoder. I go to navigation and I can use switch page and immediately this knob 
will now be able to switch between the two cameras. CIN 300, which is the second page, and then the background. And now, of course, you want to rename your background, right? So that would be CRN 500, so that it shows nicely in the display as well. That's a really nice and user-friendly configuration we have here. Okay, so CIN 300, yes, thank you. CIN 500, yes, thank you. That is also changing. Now, I am actually currently operating um, settings for the CIN 500 on the CIN 300 setting. If I go here on this page, I'm still changing this over on the CIN 500 because they are not blocked out. So what I want to do is to assign some CIN 300 related settings to this one. And therefore I will go in and basically find the same. Uh, now I just assigned gain to all of them. Um, of course that doesn't make sense, but uh, I would then yeah, why did I even do that? But I will just, yeah, okay, I don't have ND filters on that one. But at least it's consistent. So let's say that I change the CIN 300 for another camera later, then it would have ND filters right there and pedestal on encoder number C. But notice what happens as I'm changing the page, you can see clearly that this is now changing because I put those behaviors onto this layer. Okay, I, th I think you have a pretty good idea right now of, of how this is working. The final thing I need to do is to also use the shifted layer. If I go here on this shifted layer, I need to do the same to recall presets on the CIN 300 because right now it is actually doing it on the CIN 500. So I'll have to also select these faithfully on the CIN 300 page on the shifted level, go in here and preset, store and recall, batch edit, let me see, preset ID, put in one, two, three, four, five, six, done. And yes, we have preset recall on CIN 5300, yes. So awesome. A little tip, if you want to, you can see that we have um, all these behaviors assigned to buttons and knobs and joystick on different uh, pages of the um, configuration and also on shifted or normal um, levels. So if you click this page, notice that these six buttons become green. So that means there are behaviors assigned to those. If I click on the normal state, you see that not only are the buttons green, but also the knobs on top are green in this case, meaning that we have behaviors associated with all of this. If we go to CIN 300, you see in the normal state, we have assigned um, behaviors, alternative behaviors, for three parts of the joystick, rotation, left, down, up, right, and also these three knobs, but everything else is falling through to the background layer, which is CIN 500 here. And then if I go to the shift state, once again, we see that the only affected hardware components on the controller are the buttons down here for preset recall. I think I've almost made all my points to you guys, but it is so much fun to configure with Reactor 2.0 and I could keep going and I will keep going just a tiny bit more because there are so many things you, you want to tweak. And for instance, one of them would be these preset recall buttons. It currently says none and that is because it's used to pick up a camera name from a variable inside, but we can easily change this by basically, let me see, just drag across them here again. And then inside the batch editor, I would be able to go in here and choose an alternative label for these uh, or camera names. So I would type in CRN300 and then I'll just duplicate this to all of them. Done. And you see this title is now shown in top of the display. And of course, I want to do the same if I go back to CRN500, then uh, navigating back to this layer, I want to do the same over here. So let me just quickly do that. Oh, I want to select all six into the batch editor again, camera name, CRN500, and duplicate all the way through like that. Perfect, let me check. Yes, it says CRN500. Another thing I could um, uh, aspire to do was to basically change the color of this one. So go back to the normal layer on uh, the background here, click this guy, and I wanna go in here. I can open what is called default feedback, and here I can actually customize a little bit what is the title, uh, currently, you can see the title is called page. So I could select camera instead. And as I leave, you can see now it's changed to camera. I can also pick a different color. Uh, if I want it to be amber in its color to, to kind of indicate that this is a different kind of setting than the three just to the left of it. It's so easy to do all these things 
inside of Reactor. So what we are giving you is a very, very powerful tool where all the basics are easily done on the home screen. You can now do them on the configuration tab on different pages and shift levels. And at any time, you can dive in and you can tweak even more settings all the time. This is how we built this system based on a decade of experience in making universal controllers. And now finally you have it in Reactor 2.0. It's all brought together with this amazing software package. Thank you for joining me today. You can always get up to date by signing up to our newsletter or follow us on social media.